Welcome to Manifested Publishers. How do you do? It's my hope that you are faring on well. Welcome to our today's history and government lesson. It's a Form 3 topic that we are going to be tackling in our today's lesson. That is establishment of colonial rule in Kenya. That is the topic that we have been handling. And in our today's lesson, we are going to be studying the company. The company. Company rule in Kenya. That is how or after the partitioning of Africa which we learned in our previous lesson of East Africa, uh, pardon me, East Africa, Britain uh, got her territory, which he declared to be the British East African, uh, or the British East African Protectorate, which, uh, he, uh, which uh, she decided to, to, to administer. And to administer that territory, he, you, or, or, or she, uh, companies were used so the company of uh, the imperial the imperial british east african company was used to administer the territory that had been acquired by uh, the Britain. So this one is abbreviated as Iberco. That is the British, the Imperial British East African Company. So this is the company that was given the charter. She uh, he was uh, the, the the company was given the charter to administer. They were given the charter to administer. The protectorate or Kenya on behalf, administer on behalf, on behalf of British government. So given uh, uh, this one should be a small letter on behalf of the British government. Uh, because it would uh, it would be so much costly for the government to administer the uh, the protectorate on uh, uh, directly. So the company, um, uh, the Imperial uh, British East African Company, was given the charter or was given the power to administer or manage Kenya or the British uh, protectorate on behalf of the Kenyan uh, of the British. Government. So, the rights uh, he, uh, were given to this company to do everything on behalf of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of of the government. This happened in 1888. That is when uh, the company was given the rights or the charter to administer the British protectorate on behalf of the British. So immediately. Uh, the company got that uh, charter, it leased out the land to the interior uh, to Sultan, so that uh, it leased uh, the, 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 the land from Sultan so that they could advance or they could invest or make profits. Remember, this is a company that has been given that territory. So they are using it for their own uh, economic uh, for their own economic uh, 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 importance. So let us first discuss the aims, the aims of uh, uh, Iber or the aims of the Imperial British East African Company. What were the goals? What did they need? What? Why was it important for them to get this territory? And to administer, uh, uh, to administer that territory. The first one, they uh, were to maintain law and order. They were supposed to maintain 
maintain, law, and order. That was their first aim or their first goal. They were supposed to maintain law and order in the territory. So they, their mandate was to make sure that the territory that was declared a German sphere on, of influence. Remember, during the Berlin Conference, one of the terms of that conference or the Berlin Conference was that a company that had declared a sphere of influence had to follow that declaration with effective occupation. Effective occupation. So they had to effectively occupy. What does it mean to effectively occupy? There had to be uh, uh, law and order in that territory. So the first order of business of the, uh, of the Imperial British East African Company was to maintain law and order. And then number two, they were to counter. It was to counter, counter the influence counter the influence of the french uh, the germans and italy who are also interested in this area so the imperial british east african company was given the role or the mandate of countering the influence of the Germans, especially who are the biggest rivals in this area uh, to the British. So the other aim or the other goal for them was to counter uh, the spread or the influence of, uh, uh, of uh, those countries. Number three, they were to control and develop trade. They were to control and develop develop trade and trading activities they had to make sure that uh, there was uh, there was effective trade activities in that area the communities or they were they were able to uh, uh, exploit the resources they were able to get control of the trading activities in the territory that was the next uh, the next the next aim the fourth one that is number four uh, they were to collect they were supposed to levy not just collect they were supposed to levy allow me to uh, rub that they were supposed to levy and collect taxes taxes on the territory that was the next uh, work of the imperial british east african company or the next aim or goal of the uh, company they were supposed to levy that is to apportion the taxes that are required and then number two to collect those taxes for the benefit or for the influence of the uh, of the company and then lastly they were supposed to uh, advocate advocate for the end of slave trade they were supposed to abolish slave trade in that territory they were supposed to make sure that the slave trade that had started happening that was led by the sultan uh, at the coast has now been uh, avoided or had now been brought to an end so those were the aims of the of this company as it occupied the uh, territory of kenya remember britain is occupying this land they have made uh, an agreement as nations but as a government, they are not able to come and occupy that land physically. So they use the, uh, uh, this company to control the, the, the territory. So those were the aims. Now, as they were making these, uh, 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 as they were 
uh, controlling and exercising their authority over this territory. They had some several achievements. Now, that is the next thing. We are going to look at the achievements. The achievements of Imperial British East African Company. The achievements of Imperial British East African Company. So the first one uh, is that they were able to suppress. They were able to suppress the revolts by traditional by traditional communities they were able to suppress the revolts by traditional communities so as they took control or took authority in those territories some most african communities did not accept so they had to uh, to, to stand up against them, but they managed to uh, quench or uh, bring an end to those rebellions. Number two, uh, they laid a foundation. The company laid a foundation. They laid a foundation for the coming of the colonial administration. So they laid structures that later could come and be used by the British government during the direct control. And then, number three, they uh, freed many slaves. Freed slaves. They freed slaves. So, as we mentioned, they had to advocate for the end of slave trade. That was an aim or that was a, 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 a need that they had to uh, uh, be able to accomplish so they freed a lot of slaves who are uh, enslaved especially at the coast and these brought uh, most of the people back to their uh, homes apart from that they started construction construction of roads construction of roads along the trade routes the trade routes were the trading activities were happening these they expanded by creating roads or constructing roads they financed uh, the construction of roads so these enabled or made way uh, for the government later on the government the colonial administrators to come and uh, use the same roads or advance the same roads as uh, 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 during the time of occupation and then uh, uh, lastly, they started. Uh, they started early industries. They started early industries. As remember, they they had the they, they, they had to uh, undertake trading activities. So, in the year trade, they had to start industries. For example, the weaving, the textile industry, was uh, initiated by this company. So to make sure that the cotton that was being grown was now being put into place. So the earliest industries were set up by uh, the Imperial British East African Company. So those are some of the achievements that were, be, were, were able to be acquired by, by the by the company that was acting on behalf of the British government. So even with those uh, 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 achievements, the Imperial British East African Company made a lot of significant influence because they effectively occupied this land, this territory of Kenya. It was effectively occupied and led by the Imperial British East African Company. So they made several uh, forts or centers of administration. That is uh, another, you could also mention another influence or another impact made by the British East African Company. So they made forts. They made forts, which were also referred to as bombers. 
at different areas where they could uh, store uh, uh, trade commodities, where they could uh, live. So these uh, forts included, they had made one at uh, Kismayu, they also, they also made another one at Malindi, another one was made at Vanga, another one was made at Witu, another one was made at Machakos, another one was made at uh, Fort Smith, and lastly, uh, 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 there was a fort in Mumias. So these are administrative centers that were created by the Imperial British East African Company. So these are uh, ensured that they could easily control or they could easily manage the territory. Yes, uh, despite of them making those uh, achievements, they also encountered some problems. So they had problems. So the problems faced by Imperial British East African Company. What are these problems that they faced uh, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in establishing their control? The first one is that uh, they did not have enough uh, manpower. They did not have manpower. They did not have enough manpower. They did not have enough leaders to effectively control or to, uh, to carry out their activities or, or their objectives. So that was a very significant problem or challenge that they had faced. And then most Africans were resisting. Resistance. Resistance. Most of the African communities resisted the advancement or the work of the imperial british east africa so there were frequent revolts and for them to quench or for the british or for the company to quench this resistance they required a lot of resources they had to invest a lot of money to quench those rebellions that was very costly on the uh, land and also the land was too big the land was too vast. So you can imagine from the coast uh, towards the interior, the Imperial British East Africa was responsible for both Kenya and Uganda, right? And part of Somali. So that was a very huge chunk of land to be managed by uh, one company. So that was another challenge. And then there was very, uh, there was a poor transport system. Poor transport uh, poor transport. There were no elaborate road system. They did not have established roads where they could move on every now and then. And then also they did not have uh, navigable rivers. Uh, they did not have navigable There were no navigable rivers that could ease the movement of or the, the, the carrying of uh, trade items. So that required them carrying or uh, employing a lot of laborers to transport the uh, commodities. And then there was uh, uh, there was low uh, there was low trading activities. There were low trading activities between the people of the coast and the people of the interior. So the trade uh, volume was very low. So that meant that they did not make as higher profits as they had anticipated. That was, an, uh, that was a problem or a challenge on the uh, side. And then uh, lastly, uh, the last problem that they faced was that uh, uh, the last problem that they faced was that uh, 
it was so expensive it was very expensive it was very expensive to maintain the territory it was very expensive to maintain the territory and all the administrative centers they had created they needed uh, a lot of leaders they needed a lot of administrators in these territory who were supposed to be paid so that became very expensive on the side or on the part of the company so these uh, uh, brought or uh, encouraged the British government to finally come and establish their own control the, the, the company could no longer be able to effectively uh, manage or handle the territory which forced the British government to send down uh, its own leaders or uh, leaders to come and take control of the territory so those th that is the company rule in Kenya they have uh, we, we have mentioned that in Camp uh, in the British East African protectorate it was led by the Imperial British East African company and we have looked at the aims of that company what achievements they made and then lastly we have looked at the problems that they had faced so as we end our lesson today allow me to uh, allow me to uh, give you a rub here and give you an uh, assignment give you an assignment Uh, revision question revision questions number one name name the company that administered the British number two What were the aims of Iberco? And then lastly, explain the challenges faced by Imperial British East African Company. So the first question is, name the company that administered the British, British East African Protectorate. And then number two, what were the aims of the Imperial British East African Company? And lastly, explain the challenges faced by Imperial British East African company. Those are the questions I want you to attempt and answer them. So note the, uh, write them down and also write your answers uh, 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 effectively and then uh, check whether you are able you have been able to grasp what we have learned today. And that brings us to the end of our history and government lesson for today. Bye-bye until the next time.